this group, the male who was dominant in 2004 is still dominant after 10 years. While in the other group, four different males occupied this position during the same time period. Here, each switch was preceded by social tensions and fights. After being deposed, one dominant male died, one disappeared, and the others stayed in the group, becoming subordinate. Agonistic interactions among group members are the major cause of stress in this population of capuchin monkeys. Mansigno was a dominant male. When he lost his alpha status, he was seriously wounded and also lost his left foot. Though climbing may sometimes be difficult for him, this handicap does not prevent him from having a normal life. In spite of the dominance hierarchy, capuchins are in general very tolerant when foraging. At anvil sites, with only one hammer and several individuals ready to crack nuts, there is a higher frequency of aggression and a lower level of tolerance than in other clumped resources. The cautious behavior of a subordinate capuchin does not prevent the adult male from threatening him. The capuchin female does most of the courtship. She vocalizes and tries to attract him. The chosen male is initially rather reluctant. The female tries to capture his attention in all possible ways, even using objects. The male waits hours or even days before being willing to mate. After mating, the male starts courting the female more than she courts him. During the entire process, other monkeys in the group, including adult and juvenile males and females, experience more stress. The more that we learn about capuchin social interactions, the more it is clear that there are many differences among groups and individuals. Indeed, Plasticity characterizes their social ecology as well as their feeding ecology. Capuchin monkeys are one of the most omnivorous of neotropical primates. Manipulative abilities and behavioral inclinations allow them to adjust the amount of plant and animal matter in their diet, according to local and seasonal circumstances. These features might explain their wide distribution throughout Central and South America. If we are what we eat, then capuchins should be tough and ingenious creatures Half of what they eat needs some form of processing. When feeding on the burichi palm fronds, they use all five appendices to detach the leaves from the tree. They break apart the leaves, eat the inner part, eventually discarding the masticated fibers according to their destructive and strenuous nature. In this way, they extract the palm juice, avoiding the ingestion of too many fibers that slow down digestion. Sometimes capuchins peel and bite immature palm nuts to make a hole and drink the sweet liquid. Capuchins use anvils and hammer stones to crack open husked food items. This subordinate male is cautious while working at his piercava nut, 
which is very resistant and requires many hits to break. In part by extracting embedded foods with tools, as humans do, capuchins in Boa Vista obtain an easily digestible diet. Seasonally, they exploit flowers and freshy fruits. The flowers of the Pussa tree are picked up one by one and the soft and sweet petals eaten. From this tree, capuchins exploit not only the flowers, but also, some months later, the pulp of the fruit, as well as the seeds, which are rich in lipids and energy. At Fazenda Boa Vista, there are mango trees. Capuchins love this juicy and sweet food. But they dislike the peel, which is bitter. Also, cashews are very appealing. Early in the season, capuchins eat only the soft part, called apple, sucking it with the head thrown back. They do not waste even a drop of this abundant juice. They eventually discard the rest. Youngsters do exactly the same. The discarded item still has the edible seed inside a grey nut. At this stage of maturity, the nut contains caustic chemicals. Better to avoid them. Later, when opening the nut is less dangerous, the seed can be extracted with teeth, fingers and tools. Poraging on the ground is rather common. Monkeys look for the leaf litter and sweep the leaves around with their hands, as well as roll over stones or tree trunks to reveal food sources hidden underneath. Sometimes they excavate the ground to extract the tubers hidden in the earth. Though capuchins end up spending more time consuming fruits, they actually spend more time searching for invertebrates than for fruits. They stick their hands and arms in tree holes. Despite the danger they might hide, these cavities are often explored. Beehives and wasp nests are worth trying. Capuchins are persistent foragers and they often succeed in exploiting hidden or challenging food resources. The combination of black and red colors is used by many animals to signal that they are toxic. This young capuchin briefly explores this insect and leaves it alone. This food is not any good. The monkeys also hunt and eat vertebrates. Meat is an important source of energy. Reptiles are the most common prey, lizards above all. Eating raw meat requires time. Tender tissues, such as the brain, are eaten first. They require less chewing and have a good balance between protein and lipids. An individual often discards part of the prey when eating alone. But this is not the case when group members are nearby. A great kiskadee has been caught by a subadult male. The event causes great excitement and soon the bird has other owners. While the prey gets eaten by some members of the group, younger individuals approach them and try to get their share, not always successfully. 
Eventually, even young capuchins have their ribs to chew on, and every tiny piece of meat is consumed. Males eat vertebrates more than females. Not being alone may become a real advantage when the target prey is big. This iguana weighs two times more than each of the four young capuchins hidden in the tree. It seems unaware of what is going on. But then, hands spring out of the leaves and one capuchin dares enough to encircle it. Capuchins got what they wanted. Now they hold that delicacy in their hand, the far end of the iguana tail. Luckily for the iguana, it will soon regrow. Becoming a proficient forager is one of the most important challenges that young capuchins face. Omnivorous species have to learn what to eat and how to get their food. Very young infants often mouth things while their mothers are foraging. However, it is unlikely that infants younger than eight months eat very much during their frequent chewing. Early explorations of objects naturally lead to some ingestion. Most of what young infants put into their mouths are stems and leaves that older monkeys don't eat. When they grow older, they become more selective, chewing edible objects. Most of what they learn is the byproduct of their own exploration. Mangoes are very abundant during their fruiting season, and adults are fond of them. They are a constant source of leftovers for infants that quickly realize how good they taste. For fruits like mango, Learning how to reach the sweet pulp is relatively easy. But still, infants are not able to judge quickly whether the fruit is ripe enough. This adult male is looking for arthropods in a crevice. His activity draws the attention of the infants that approach to see what he is doing. Other food items are challenging. This jatoba fruit has a hard husk that cannot be broken by biting. This 18-month-old female bangs it repeatedly on a hard termite mound. However, even though she is doing the right thing, she cannot open it. She is not strong enough. Youngsters must wait. They have to grow large enough. Kernels of palm nuts can only be obtained by using tools. During the second year of life, capuchins do not seem to know how nuts and stones should be combined together. Succulent plants such as bromeliads have spines and thorns to defend themselves but capuchins learn to eat the white part of the stem, which is especially rich in carbohydrates and proteins. Youngsters are highly motivated and keep hanging around. They start collecting the smaller and easier sprouts, or even better, what others discarded after eating and left behind. Adults are brave and cautious at the same time. This is the cashew tree, which is common here. Eating cashew nuts is extremely challenging. The seed is defended by caustic chemicals. 
When the nut is still green, it can be easily bitten. Inexperienced capuchins may do so. But this is unpleasant and makes the monkeys drool. The chemicals contained in the green nuts produce blisters on their lips. Eventually, capuchins learn not to bite green cashew nuts. The only way to obtain the seed without harm is to rub the green nut on a tree bark until the shell has a hole in it. Adults perform this behavior repeatedly until the hole is quite large. Then, the index finger is used to extract the seed one piece after the other. Youngsters are clearly less skilled. They don't rub the nut enough times to reach the kernel. Often, they soon switch to pounding the nut. That does not do any good either. The young monkeys are ineffective no matter what they do to the nut. As time goes by, nuts harden and become brown. Rubbing is ineffective to crack the husk of brown cashews, avoiding the caustic resin inside it. So capuchins use a tool. This adult female has no problem and extracts every tiny bit. Infants do not even try to process the nut. Instead, they just scrounge the leftovers. Cashew nuts have an optimal balance of protein, lipids and carbohydrates. In Fazenda Boavista, capuchins gradually learn how to process cashew nuts and encased nuts with tools in ways that are not seen in other populations of capuchins. Perhaps tool using skills and the complex cashew processing techniques are traditions of the monkeys at Fazenda Boavista, passed from one generation to another. <laughs>